ordered this 3D printer that comes from the Czech Republic. It will make for some interesting boat projects. And this is an open source printer. I think a lot of them are. All right, this is a little overwhelming. It's a kit and you gotta put all this stuff together. Oh my goodness, this is a long book. Well, let's get to it. So now I need to make sure it's level. And it's definitely got some wiggle, so I think I need to loosen these up. Now it's time for the feet. All right. It's kind of tricky. You gotta get these nuts in these tiny slots. Get some of these. Now we need the Y axis motor. Y axis motor. This printed piece screws onto the motor. Yeah, the motor goes right there. And you've got to put these little U bolt things over the bearings. Not the smoothest feeling, but I guess that's how it's supposed to be. Now we put this on the frame. It's starting to look like a 3D printer. And then these attach with zip ties. I love it. Man, that sounds so crusty. <laughs> okay, so now it's got me building this little like belt holding thing. I've got to mount it under here, I think. It's really hard to see what's going on in these pictures. I wish they used the different colored uh, parts. All right, so the belt, I think I got the tension right. You just put this screw in there and that tightens it. Now I gotta make this thing, the X-axis. I didn't show all the steps because it's just the same kind of putting nuts in and I just added the rods and the, the motor. So this part's done. I got to do the Z-axis. I got to be up and down. Find the parts. E-axis, Z-axis, Z-axis. The bags are nicely labeled in this kit. There's a lot of parts, but that really helps. And then you can just put the bolts on here and make sure they're the right size. It's pretty nice. Okay, so now I gotta mount these, these little guys. Z-axis, and same thing on this side. Sky. On there, that looks pretty good. This is the my second 3D printer. The first one I had was also a kit. It was the uh, one of those Delta style printers. It was called the Castle Clear, but I think this one will be much better for sure. The other one was back when the 3D printing thing was just kind of starting to take off. And um, first printer, it did it did work. I mean, it made some pretty good quality prints when it worked, but there was issues with certain things like the hot end and leveling which I think they've got a lot better oh boy so this is the extruder and there's a lot of parts on this one so hopefully I don't screw this up da, 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 da. all right so this is the completed extruder it took me about an hour and a half it was kind of fiddly but everything went together um, how it was supposed to it wasn't like I had to force anything it's a pretty cool design um, so now I just gotta hang it on the so I got printer. this guy mounted up, snapped on the bed and the LCD screen, and I'm just finishing up the wiring. Now I somehow need to make this thing close. Hmm. I'm not, seems to be a lot of excess wire. Oh, it's moving. Oh, oh that's so cool. There's no end stops, it just, Bounces right off. So exciting. I kind of kind of banging on itself. It's getting it on. Yeah, printer. Do your thing. Hey, I found the SD card. It had gotten lost in my pile of trash. There's a lot of packaging involved in this project. Let's try the. Whistle. Where did that go? A oh, whistle. Okay. Heating up. All right, we got a whistle. I think the cool thing about these beds is you just, just bend them kind of. 
trick with him? All right, there he is. I put a, I stuck an almond in there while I was printing, so it had like a ball. Oh man, that is loud. All right, let's download some stuff. This kind of looks cool. It's like a clip that could be useful. Put it in the slicer. All right, print number two is done. Man, that quality is pretty good. Let's see if it clips. Hey, it works. These actually are pretty good. They could replace the uh, clips I, I use on my boat to hold up the towels and stuff. I could, and I could scale this up to whatever size I want. I think I need to decrease the quality though because this print took, uh, how's it say? 54 minutes, almost an hour. Okay, so now I'm gonna try to print something a little bit more uh, useful. This is my jet boil gimbal that I I used on the Ranger that I used to have. And on that one, I had this made out of metal, but I think I can 3D print it also. Uh, I'm gonna start by printing these little ears that uh, they uh, connect to a strap around the, the little camp stove. Just a simple little uh, attachment for a strap. This is my 3D printed uh, jet foil gimbal prototype. And this is the part where the stove goes. It's gonna need a little more work. But um, gimbal is this way. I think it's gonna need a, uh, a bearing in here. Kind of works, but as it is now, it's completely 3D printable. All these are uh, 3D printed threads. I just metaled it up in Autodesk Fusion, and it uses a ball and socket. Um, these are these, these RAM mounts you can um, buy, but you can also 3D print them. I'm finding this program really useful for making kind of mechanical bits and bobs. Um, oh, it's missing those parts. I just, got, I just made these little knobs that you can you screw into the side of the stove and this is a heat resistant plastic i had one made out of the pla which is not as high temperature um and, and that worked fine too this area doesn't get super hot but i'm experimenting with the high temperature stuff it's a little harder to print it likes to warp but i found out some tricks that made that work a little better here's the look jet boil camp stove on the gimbal um i already broke it i think it's still kind of usable at the moment but you know long term yeah, that's, that's, this needs to be metal for sure. Um, I don't know, I kind of thought that would work. Uh, so I think the next thing to break will be these things. These will be replaced with, with bolts. Um, yeah, it's just the way it is, you know, you gotta, these things are kind of trial and error. So definitely pivots finally this way, but it's gonna need a bearing. I mean, it might work. Uh, I'm gonna replace this with a bearing. I will get rid of the 3D printed screws here and here. Uh, this, I think this thing will still be good. Uh, I used uh, a nylon strap before, but um, I think that'll be fine. But we'll do some boil over tests and confirm that works. Um, you know, this is all kind of fun. So then this is the ball and socket ram, ram mount. These things are pretty pricey, but I, I don't see any reason why this can't be 3D printed. Of course, this will still be a metal nut and bolt in here. Um, but it's, it's nice because, you know, you can, you, can, you know, you want to eat indoors, so like this, you want to eat outside. Move it over here. Um, you want the stove to be kind of out of your way. Push it in here. These are my 3D printed port light shutters. Duration one just kind of went like this, but then I came up with this little mechanism that lets them move together. So they'll just kind of go in the window and block out the, the light or give me more privacy. I'm gonna add Wi-Fi now. I got this little, it's called a Raspberry Pi. These are the parts I printed. I guess they help you fit it onto the printer. You just gotta cut off all these pins that aren't gonna be used. This is the beginnings of my 3D printed wind vane. Um, 
So it's gonna use, these are gonna be PVC pieces, which you know you can just easily buy and cut to length. And then these pieces here will be uh, 3D printed, all the other stuff. The and gears, I mean, they seem to work pretty well. I had to learn how to model these bevel gears, but once you figure it out, you're basically just extruding the, the standard um, gear on a cone, and then it's actually pretty straightforward. So my idea behind this is it's obviously probably wouldn't want to take this across an ocean, but you know, for coastal sailing or nice conditions, this could be a good way to experiment with a wind vane and uh, decide, you know, if that's right for you. Wind vane, it's based off of the wind pilot design. Uh, so I just kind of copied what works. Um, all the patents have expired, of course, on that. Um, and then I've kind of optimized it for 3D printing, trying to get the pieces more compact. So I'm using the uh, alpha version of Prusa Slicer, and it really makes some really nice uh, 3D print profiles in here. Let's see. And since I'm doing a bunch of pieces, I've added these little rafts to just give it a little bit more chance of sticking. I have had not a lot of issue with the sticking with this type of, uh, this type of build plate they use. It's really good stuff. Um, but if I'm, since I'm gonna be running this for six hours, I've swapped my nozzle to a, a bigger nozzle because this would have taken a lot longer with a small nozzle. Here goes the machine working its magic. This is the first batch of parts. So I've been 3D printing a whole lot of stuff for the boat lately. And uh, David uh, from Matter Hackers, I guess he watches my YouTube channel or something. And he sent me a bunch of uh, filament, including some nylon, which doesn't like to 3D print in the open air. Most materials you can print just fine on a printer like this. But um, some, some materials, they need to be kind of kept out of drafts and they need to be kept a little bit warmer. Uh, so an enclosure would help that. And you can build them yourself. But he was kind enough to send me this. Should be a little bit easier. This pack is up pretty good. There's all the pieces. Oh man. <laughs> there's a lot of, there's a lot of screws. This might be like assembling the printer again. Okay, we got some instructions and there's a bunch of panels. These look like they feel like there's like a metal maybe with sandwiched around some plastic. We've got a little uh, humidity and temperature because some of these materials are hydroscopic, so you wanna keep uh, moisture out. We've got some hinges, nuts and bolts. So let's get started and try to figure this thing out. I spent quite a lot of time removing plastic from these panels, but once I got that, it went together pretty easily. Just these screws kind of go into these um, slots. And then here's like a close up. Uh, you definitely don't want to over tighten these. Like you, would, you could easily crack a panel, it looks like. Now onto the hinges. And some more of that dreaded plastic. Nice. Looks pretty good. So I think I'm done now. The last step is just to screw in all these, uh, little panels and they let you add the filament to whatever whatever side you want. So I have the, the Prusa over there. So it fits in here just fine, but we will need to make a spool holder up here because there's not enough room for the old spool holder. I found a good way to make a spool holder. I just cut some slots in this dowel and that works pretty perfectly. So the first print, oh, it looks like I had an error. But I'm trying to I'm trying out this this uh, flexible TPU now. Let's see what's going on. A little bit crazy in here. Something stuck on the bed. I think that's what happened. The bed's not flush. I pulled out that little piece, and we're printing good. Wow, that's a really thick first layer. I would like to get one of those uh, filament drying devices so I can just leave my filament all ready to go. Like this, I just unload it, so now I need to put that in its a uh, its airtight bag with some probably desiccant. This this TPU is printing pretty nicely though. Thanks for watching. I'm really excited about all the possibilities this 3D printer is going to open up for the boat projects. I'm sure that little guy will pop his head up again in some of our upcoming boat project videos. Big thanks to David and Matter Hackers for supplying the enclosure. And a huge thanks to everybody who's gotten me stuff off the Amazon wish list. I've got a big pile of things that are just waiting to be installed on the boat in these upcoming project videos. 
So I hope you guys will tune in next time.